Ladies and gentlemen, let's just get right on into it because we got like 50 questions. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third, y'all guys third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider subscribing and becoming part of the family. Clicking the subscribe button bottom right hand corner. Now, as a lot of you are all aware, it's been about a month since I went full time on YouTube. I was able to go full time on YouTube due to Patreon coming in and supporting my basically supporting all of my financials in order to live and survive because my job, which was which is a good paying job, they made they gave me the ultimatum between keeping the channel and being in the public eye in the way that I was on the channel or keeping the job. And people came in and swooped in and was like, nah, we can't see you delete your channel. You're doing something that nobody's doing on YouTube. You, you got a lot of potential and we want to ride that out through with you so here's a couple of dollars a month in order to make sure that you're able to survive and keep the channel going i've been strictly youtube for basically about a month going on a little bit over at this point and it's all thanks to the people on patreon and because it's all thanks to the people on patreon they get a couple of get a couple of exclusive things per tier and on the mid to higher end people get to ask questions so because of patreon and because i'm full time anytime i do a q a all questions are exclusively coming from patreon from now on so we're just going to do this thing rapid fire as fast as i possibly can not just straight short answers I want to give a little bit of explanation to the answers but I'm not gonna be crazy long-winded on each so we can like get through them you know but we're just gonna go in order first question Aaron he says would you ever consider streaming actually this like these questions were almost two weeks ago at this point so I have been I have been talking about very heavily especially in discord with everybody on discord about streaming but yeah I'm gonna get a full-on couple thousand dollars on the setup and we're gonna go balls to the wall on this thing, you know? Next up, we got Jared Champ. What are your all-time favorite sports moments, Texas and not Texas? Obviously, Texas related, they're pretty much all gonna be Spurs. The Spurs, whenever they whenever they won their first championship, it was literally on my birthday when I was like in 1999. I don't remember how, how old that was then, 10 years old probably. So that one, and then just us being the dynasty that we were throughout the entire 2000s. And then my favorite non-Texas sports moment is easily easily Derek Jeter coming up for his final at bat of his career in Yankee Stadium and hitting a game winning single like like poking it through dude is Mr. October Mr. Clutch there's only one right way to end a career and it is with a game winning walk off single crazy next we got Stephen Chase O'Neill what was the Christmas you remember most as a child to be honest the Christmas that I remember most has nothing to do with the gifts or anything that I've ever received it was when I was actually slightly older me and my cousins were all in high school and my grandma's house it was like a centralized location for our family everybody gathered there and I remember one time like she said to all of us or she said to me or a couple of my cousins like you know I'm sorry that I didn't have the money for gifts this year and at that moment we were all like we don't even care about the gifts we're just all glad that we're here right now so it was like it was a combination of that very sincere apology which did not need to be given and also the fact that we were all old enough to realize that it was no longer about the gifts and it was more just spending time with each other next we got Vince Martinez would you ever put your house up for rent convert a van bus and create re reactions on the road you are a full-time youtuber after all grow the brand I think that concept would be like dope to do but in reality I don't ever see it actually happening especially considering like I try to make my videos as professional as possible and that requires a certain setup it requires a certain light when it's night you know I don't want to have direct overhead or behind light from like the van I know that I could technically bring all that stuff with me but now we're talking about it's no longer as simple as a spontaneous van bus life now it's actually like a moving studio and on top of that I get chronic migraines and it's been established on the channel I've talked about it before but I need to stay close to my I need to stay close to my neurologist just because anything happens I got to be there to talk about it with her so long term in terms of like actually renting out my house for like a year or two while I just go and do this on the road not really maybe like a short week or two at a time I do plan on doing some type of flying out to different different places but yeah the van bus life definitely not for me next up Brittany Singleton I don't know if you've answered this already but could you tell us more about your upbringing like what type of music did you listen to growing up what about romantic interests is there any girl in the same music or is isn't even into music at all is that a deal breaker great question lots of questions in there so I'll try to sum it up I grew up in a very strict household I actually was not allowed to listen to hip-hop or rap or, or rock or anything that had any type of like aggressiveness in a certain direction toward it like that was just not the household that we grew up in like I primarily 
I would probably say 95% of the time listen to country music, which is why I have an affinity for like early 90s or 90s and 2000s country, because that is what I grew up on. And I personally believe it's the best era in country music. So I'm talking about like Alan Jackson. I'm talking about George Strait. I'm talking about Brooks and Dunn. I'm talking about like uh, Garth Brooks. I'm talking about Martina McBride. I'm talking about Dixie Chicks. I'm talking like all of those like early 2000s plate people. I'm about that life. And in terms of romantic interest, and if it's a make or break situation, depending on if they like music or not, it is definitely a make or break situation. Like there is no way, there is no way I would be able to live with somebody who, if we're driving at the same time in the same car, we're gonna argue or we're gonna have to both compensate for what we wanna listen to. We can't even vibe, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't like music at all, that's like, thing that I think that's more of a shock for me. Like what, what do you mean you don't like music? Like, like it's built into our genetics to like, like rhythmic patterns and like music. Like what do you mean you don't like music? So yes, music does play a big factor into whether or not a relationship can succeed for me. It's not the number one factor. I might be able to get over it a little bit, but if it's complete polar opposites, nah, it's not going to work. Pixie does parentheses, Jessica P, are you going to vote and encourage people to find out how to register and vote? Just read an article that first time voters are less likely to vote if they don't have a plan set in place to make sure that they've registered to think about the physical how and doing that. Yes, I do plan on voting. I vote every single time that I can because I do believe it is one of our, the country was founded on the ability to have like representation for the taxation that we have and for the policies that are set in, in place for the country. Now, whether or not my vote plays a big difference on certain campaigns at the local level I know it definitely does because it is popular vote but at the at the presidential level I don't know if it has as big of a as big of a play because I'm from Texas so whether I vote blue or red Texas is historically predominantly a red state so I feel like on the electoral college side no matter which way you vote in Texas unless there's an abundance of blue votes like that's that normally is not the case so we normally vote red most of the time but yes I do encourage people to vote regardless of who you're voting for regardless you know it's just one of your it's one of your rights as an American citizen that needs to be that needs to be flexed whenever possible and if you decide that you don't want to vote that's your prerogative that's all cool and all that's up to you but at the same time I don't want to hear you bitch about what's going on politically if you didn't if you didn't flex the opportunity to make your voice hurt you know next we got dark beard what is a video slash reaction slash idea you would love to do but it's just too hard to make happen or film or edit or do you think that the views just wouldn't be there to, to too early to branch out on it it's a great question I definitely would want to do I want to make my my channel more so like obviously about the reactions about the music but I want to make it I want to make it about me as the personality behind the channel so vlogs I'm trying to incorporate a lot more especially now that I'm full-time and can you know a vlog takes me a couple of hours to edit especially when I have like a minute and a half like b-roll sequence in there like I've had in the past couple of vlogs once the channel grows enough the, the reaction will actually unfortunately start to slow because I do need to be able to not rely on patreon so heavily for month for money because people can just just drop out I really can't control I can try to put a lot of content into patreon to make sure that you're getting your money's worth but I really can't control when people come in and drop out unfortunately so I want to have some type of like baseline income from YouTube and then the patreon would just be on top of that next up Jose Avalos what's your favorite TV show now that you're a full-time youtuber and control your own schedule what do you like to watch Game of Thrones maybe also saludos from Houston Texas fam yo song of the day today was literally learn that shit from Texas talking about Houston rap yo shouts to Houston from San Antonio your Hispanic cousin three hours away so favorite TV shows of all time I'll list them right now for you Seinfeld Parks and Rec The Office Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones would have been one if the very end of the last season wasn't so shit because that that destroyed the re the re the rewatchability of the of the show but right off the top of the head those oh and then Bob's Burgers Bob's Burgers would probably be my favorite cartoon besides Spongebob of all time Next up, James B, I wanna know who your top 10 favorite rappers are and why. Be real with us, please. I wanna know more about your taste. James B, that would probably have to be an individual video on its own, and it's something that I will make as the channel grows, just so that way I can, I can kinda explain my thought process in it. But if I had to list them off, this is what we're gonna be looking at. We're gonna be looking at J. Cole. We're gonna be looking at Drake. We're gonna be looking at Kanye West. We're gonna be looking at Kendrick Lamar, Lupe Fiasco. Someone that a lot of people don't realize is the next one, but Dave East, he is very, he's very much like a hood New York rapper I do like a lot of logic even though some of those middle even though some of those middle albums I really wasn't messing with too much I do like logic especially beginning logic mixtape logic uh, young Sinatra 
Ultra, the Mo, the, the No Pressure album. Like I, I like Logic enough. I like enough of his albums to be able to say that he is up there as one of my favorites. Did I say Eminem already? Obviously Mac Miller, RIP. Big Crit, Boogie, Lil Baby, if we're talking about going into that, like that style of rap, Lil Baby, Polo G. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of people that I like. But yeah, I definitely will make a top 10 list of artists that I listen to, like I said, and I can make a completely different top 10 list if we're talking about greatest artists, greatest lyricists of all time. Like every list has its own individual style. Not only its own individual style, but it has a different order and it has different artists on each individual list depending on what we're talking about. The, the lyricist list is gonna be different than the greatest artists of all time list, that kind of thing. Zach Fenton, would you be opposed to driving to Texarkana, Texas to do reaction in a car that has a solid system. Yo, Texarkana is not anywhere near San Antonio, so there would have to be a specific reason why I'm going to the north area other than to do a reaction, especially that would, it would suck if I did a reaction in a sound system car like that that's built for that, and then the, then the reaction gets blocked. So there would need to be a reason why I'm there besides the reaction, but if I'm up there already, then yeah, I definitely stop by, record a couple reactions, and hope that they all get, hope that none of them get blocked. That'd be dope. Next, Christopher Hella Asterix. What made you start analyzing rap lyrics and have you ever transitioned this from mumble rap over to story rap? I was never part of the mumble rap era like, like that. Mumble rap was ripe after my generation. I would say my brother's generation was the first one that kind of started to get into it. And even my brother doesn't really like a whole lot of it just because I guess he grew up listening to my music. And starting to analyze rap lyrics, is always was, it was always something that I had done internally, like in my mind. My cousins, my, anybody that you talk to, I would they would tell you that I've been explaining lyrics to them for years. And then I finally just decided to get the courage through some drunken night at a Mexican restaurant, one too many margaritas, and decided to do, what well, I don't even remember the first reaction, the kamikaze, reaction and that's when I was like oh shit I can actually do this let's turn this into a channel so there was never like a pinpoint moment where I was like you know what right now I'm gonna start analyzing music it had always happened and then I just transitioned it into YouTube Edward Panta Panta depending if you're Spanish or not or Hispanic if you could sit down with any artist alive or dead who would it be and why damn if we're talking about sitting down just to chill and like just record like a vlog with them in studio and just ask them some questions and things like that it would probably be J. Cole and uh and Andy Minio right now, believe it or not. Next up, Daniel Farrington. What's your favorite Lil Dicky song? When do you think he's gonna put out an album? Bro, his album's been on hold for almost five years already. And I, and I was just like any other Lil Dicky fan, I was getting hella frustrated. Him, Rihanna, and Kendrick Lamar, I am no longer waiting for albums from them. They're gonna drop whenever they're gonna drop just so I don't get frustrated waiting. But whenever I saw Dave and whenever I saw the FX and it got renewed for season two and I watched Dave and I understood like the concept nature of the show I wasn't even mad at that point anymore because the dude is just a star all the way around so it's dope to like see him live that dream out as well as be an artist and his show is about his music so I don't know when it's coming but hopefully you know soon in the next couple of years but my favorite little Dicky track of all time is easily Truman like the storytelling capability and him talking about his mindset and how he knew he was gonna be the person that he was or that he is that, sh that song is dope Isaiah Vianez who is the person you look up to most and why can this count as one question yes it can and the person that i look up most to and why outside of family obviously look up to you know all of my all of my relatives for different reasons dad mom step step stepmom my brother but if we're talking about like celebrity status or someone that i don't know personally i would probably say j cole because j cole came in and knew that the force he was gonna be and didn't sacrifice his me he, he sacrificed his music one time his initial opening song to to make sure that he was put on because that's what the label wanted he talked talks about it on multiple occasions, but to be able to not sacrifice your craft in order to gain commercial success, like stay true to who you are, that's dope in my eyes. Anybody that has that idea for who they are and that they're not gonna sway too far from that in order to find the success that they that they know they're, they're capable of finding, that is something that is to be admired, in my personal opinion. Next up, Christian Campos. How has music helped shape who you are today and how do you think it will continue to inspire you in the future? You know, like music is just like, it's a big part of me because it helped me find it helped me find what I like and who I am and, and the things that it's the first thing that I branched out in terms of what I like. Obviously, when you're a kid, you like cartoons and then you go into like sports and everybody likes sports and their teams for their own reason. But they're kind of like formulaic lanes that you fit into. But music, there's it's so vast and there's so many different categories and it's genres and subgenres within the genres. And so it's the first thing where I kind of like said, 
this is me, this is who I am, this is the music I listen to. And whether or not it inspires me in the future, it definitely will. There's like no way, music is constantly evolving so there's always new things and new things to listen to as long as you keep an open mind. Next up, we got Darcy Barnes. What would be a dream opportunity you'd be presented with that thanks to your full-time YouTube career, you would never would have had if you went the corporate route and deleted your channel? Literally anything creative, literally any type of opportunity that's provided for me, whether I get whether I get backstage passes, whether I get, you know, media clearance at festivals like South by Southwest to be able to interview artists and interview people on the street, whether I go and do like travel vlogging, whether I'm able to become a streamer and, and be successful at streaming, like there's all basically anything, any avenue that is possible, I see this channel going down. I see the channel having a million subscribers. I see the vlogs taking off and that being like a, a niche audience that that is created from the channel i see interviews with artists happening in the future so literally this can go anywhere in any direction i want to take it as long as y'all guys are willing to watch and you know basically watch me evolve over the years you know next up owen how has it been having all this time to record and do you think you will do any more john bailey and reactions more john bailey and reactions to come i actually get i'm actually going to record one after this because the two people on Patreon requested the same track, so I'm gonna do a second John Bellion track. Maybe New York Soul part one or blue, I don't know yet. But yes, John Bellion reactions will come. And uh, how has it been having all this time to record? It's good, but it, but it still feels like a job because I still have to record. I still have to make sure I'm making like, you know, at least I'm recording three to four videos a day and, and backlogging, editing raw raw footage. So it still feels like a job. It's not just all fun and games. There's then there's much more pressure now to succeed than there was when I was just in the corporate world. But it's pressure that I put on myself. So obviously it's definitely much better. Next, Joanne Nellis, just curious, have you ever taken an IQ test? And if so, what was your score? The reason I asked that your local breakdown reminds me of being an English lit class, listening to a professor give extensive and descriptive literary analysis of a short story. So first off, no, I have never taken an IQ test ever. I would, I would like to assume that I'd be slightly above average, if not just a little bit more than that. Uh, my SAT scores were pretty above average, but not like, you know, elite status. I'm not getting into Harvard based off the merit of my SAT score, but I'm also not going to college, you know? And just the lyrical ability to break down, that was something that I just trained myself to learn how to do over the years. There probably is some type of innate gift that I have in order to do it, but it's definitely a honed craft that I've done over the years. And the reason why I guess why it sounds like a professor talking about English literature or British literature is because like I was an, a, literally an ace in all of my English classes ever throughout all of high school, college, elementary, middle school, just never got any bad grade, all essays, anywhere from 95 to 100s, even at the collegiate level, even at non-English you know, research papers, 20 page papers, 98. So I do believe that there is some type of like gift that I have for the English language and that translated into, into music and lyrics, but I don't know if it's anything IQ related because I've never taken a test. Next up, Sean Rothwell. Yo, Ernest, what do you think of the seemingly widespread consumption of reaction videos? What do you think that says about people? As in, what do you think are the psychological value reactions videos have in this crazy internet age? Like a simple source of confirmation bias or maybe something more akin to finding digital friends to discuss interests you don't have an outlet for? I don't know, I watch a lot of reactions, this is the shit I think about. Anyway, I really appreciate your work, man, keep doing you. Appreciate that, Sean, I appreciate you watching, and yo, you are not the only one that thinks about this shit. I have literally always thought about this, like why do people watch reactions? Confirmation bias can be, I might make a separate video on this altogether, but confir confirmation bias can be part of it, but I think it's more so along the lines of like you watching someone open a present that you bought that you bought for them. You know you're excited about it and you're hoping to get the same reaction or the same excitement from somebody else watching what you're excited about. Even though you're not the creator of the music, you just share this passion for the music and you hope that somebody else was passionate about it in the same way. And when it comes to finding digital friends, I don't know if that's more so for the reaction side because you and I can only have a certain like amount of dialogue. But like in Discord, for example, everybody that follows me in Discord obviously has the same, they, they all have my channel in common and they, they all want to build a community around it. And Discord is dope. I've had multiple people and even me, that's why I call it the third fam because I interact with a lot of people in Discord. I, we, have, we have inside jokes that are specific to Discord. You know, that is more like finding internet friends. And I've had people say that, like, you know, this Discord has brought me in touch with more people than I ever could have imagined. And I feel connected to people through this Discord. So if you're not in the Discord and you want to potentially hop in, feel free, because I'm in that thing all the time. And everybody, there's a lot of there's a lot of regulars in there. Next up, Kelly, one of the Discord moderators, speaking of Discord. Since there have been Ferrari jokes in the Discord, what is your dream car or cars newer classic? 
My dream cars are always new and they would be the DB, DB8, DB9, the Aston Martin because I'm a huge James Bond fan. I've mentioned it before on the channel. And then if we had to talk about dream supercar, it'd be the McLaren P1. Easy. Bertie Jeffers, what in your Myers-Briggs personality type? I'm guessing ENTJ slash P or INTP slash J, but what do I know? I'm part of the 1.5% who gets INFJ. I actually don't remember. I need to remember this because it's not the first time that I've been asked, but I have an entire video where I took the Myers-Briggs personality test. So I will link that video and you can watch me take it and explain my way through it. For me, at least it was entertaining and people were like, I don't know why I sat here for 40 minutes and watched this video, but it was entertaining all the way through. So I'll link it in the description and in the card up top. MBH underscore halt undead. Will we ever get another rap slash do you plan on posting more raps? I can't believe the only one who, I can't be the only one who thought you I can't be the only one who thought you were fire. I appreciate that, man. And yes, I actually posted a second one already. Next up, Coldplay Center. Out of all the things, songs you've reacted to, which was your favorite to react to slash make a video of? I would probably say my first 21 Pilots reaction was dope because I didn't know which way. I did not expect that sound from them whatsoever. It was Lane Boy, if I remember correctly. Uh, the Search, obviously, because it, it got me this whole new NF fan base and I found out the artist that NF is in terms of his concepts, in terms of what he talks about. Like I had never even heard of the dude before. Energy in motion, yeah. Will you please reflect on the feelings you experience when asking your subscribers to help during the ultimatum? Were you ever hopeful? Were you nervous, embarrassed, confident in the community's response? In terms of the feelings that I experienced when asking my subscribers, the very first thing that I experienced was anger, first off, from like whenever my job told me that I couldn't that I couldn't keep the channel, that they were giving me like this ultimatum that, that they were giving me. I was like, what in the fuck does this YouTube channel have to do, like how was this even at risk for anything in the financial world and then they had the nerve to tell me like why did you not bring this up at first during your initial interview so I basically said why the fuck didn't you ask if you knew if you knew something like this was gonna be a problem I'm not just gonna bring it up if I don't know what's gonna be a problem I honestly saw no issue with it but once they gave me that ultimatum and once the once the gear started turning and, the, and like the anger went away and I and I had to try to find out what I needed to do like yeah it was panic at first because I, I knew I had maybe four to eight hours before I had to delete the channel I wasn't in embarrassed because I do feel like I provide enough content for people to come and come over to Patreon, but I just didn't know how everybody was going to respond because I only had maybe 115,000 subscribers at that point. But yeah, I wasn't necessarily embarrassed, but I was definitely nervous because it was a, it's been like two years worth of work that I've dedicated into this channel. I was nervous that all that was going to have to go away and I was just going to be unhappy thinking about the channel that I deleted at my corporate office. So I was nervous and definitely not confident in the community's response, but yeah, y'all came through in the clutch and I like I said I can't even imagine I can't even explain to you the gratitude that I have for that next up Shelly Slade I'm interested in how you're learning so much about music I learn from you every time I watch a reaction thank you that's why I do it I try to make sure that you know everybody can take something away from each video production wise and bar analysis wise bar analysis wise once again I've done it forever I'm very confident in my skills in the English language and my skills in, in poetry and my skills in just writing and literature in general so that's pretty much straightforward it's just something that I have innate within myself. But the production side, I, I just listen. I don't know all the terms. I don't know all of the, like, I don't know the technical details of what goes into it, but I know what I hear. I listen to, I listen to the lyrics first, because obviously that's the point of the music. But after I listen to the lyrics, like the third or fourth time that I listen, I'm listening strictly to the production to see what I can what I can take away from the way the production sounds and the emotions that it makes me feel. It's the same exact way that I feel about director of photography on a movie set. Like obviously the director and the stars are gonna get all of the shine, but really the person that makes the movie look the way it does is the director of photography. So it's the same way with music. Like obviously the artist is gonna get all the shine, but I wanna make sure that I give this the same amount of credit to the production team because that team is the one that made it sound the way that it did. Next up, who drank the moon? How did your mom slash family react to your decision to become a full-time YouTuber? Just hearing you talk, it's quite easy to see that you are very intelligent, thank you, and that you probably excelled in any profession. It's a it's a whole new avenue of money that is that was not around for their generation. You know, they also believe in my capability and they all believe that I have the ability and talent to do what I'm doing. But in terms of the financial side, them and myself, which like it's a whole new world 
world in terms of new money and how you can make money on YouTube and how you can make money on Twitch and being a content creator. So everybody was nervous, but after thinking about it, after I told them about it, after they watched my video, the same one that y'all watched about the ultimatum, they knew that I was making the right decision because while we didn't know how the monetary situation was gonna work or how it is gonna work to like long term, they believed in my ability and talent to be successful in this. And most people understand the corporate job, financial institutions, Fidelity, Edward Jones, Merrill Lynch, you know, whatever, whatever financial world I was going into, that's always gonna be there. This right here, this opportunity that we face right now is not. So I had, I had to do it and they understood that. Next up, Zach Jackinson. When are you gonna finally put us out of our misery and make a song? Clearly you've got the skills and know-how. Um, I wish that I, you know, I don't have the, I don't have the, I don't have the tools necessary to make an actual like solid produced sound. Like the mic that I use right now, this shotgun mic, like the one that I'm speaking to in, it's not the type of mic that you would wanna use for a product, for production audio. But I'll still be posting these snippets and these one individual verses or just these couple of bars like I've been doing for the twice, for the two times that I've done it until I'm able to, until I'm able to, you know, figure all that out. Out, which might not be for like a year, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Next up, Joe Casamento. What are the top five newest artists you found since starting the channel? New artists that I had no idea about. 21 Pilots, NF, MGK for sure, actually. Oh, Blackpink, yes. Blackpink, the, the K-pop group, yo. I'm like enamored by them right now. Dakota Wing, which artist slash band did you not know previously doing a reaction to were you the most impressed with? Basically the same question as Joe. <laughs> but yo, yeah, same thing. I would say MGK and his and his ability on the rap, actually just his ability in general. I, I just never really listened to him. And then obviously when he went at Eminem, I knew that he wasn't a big enough artist to, to go at Eminem and and destroy him in the way that he thought that he could. So MGK, once I actually opened my eyes and you know gave him a fair shot, and then obviously 21 Pilots as well. 21 Pilots is probably the uh, the one the most. They're so all over the place and they can do pretty much every lane well. And I had previously had like this negative connotation in my head about who they were because of their radio, because of their radio hits that were on Blurry Face. The most talented dudes I've heard in quite some time. Next up, Jonathan Irizarry, which female rapper of all time? Ooh, that's, that's a lot of female rappers. Do you think has the most skills and was underappreciated? Obviously, I don't even know about underappreciated, but most skills and, and the world knew, the hip hop world at least knew, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill's pen game, her ability to sing, her ability to her ability to ride the beat, like it's all it's all there. Even songs that sound like they have that 90s like that 90s rap sound, even they they still stand the test of time. They don't sound dated because the red like the entire album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill is is like an iconic an iconic album. Next up, Daniel Rodriguez, which do you enjoy more, live freestyles on radio stations slash ciphers or well written and produced verses? Uh, depends on the artist. Like someone like Lil Dicky, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy his well-written and produced verses more because he's a very conceptually based artist. So he puts a lot of thought concept into the uh, into the song. With certain artists like Lupe Fiasco, Juice World, you know, there's uh, Eminem. There's a couple of artists that I know freestyle at the top of the dome when they're on, when they're on radio, and that that shit is crazy just to be able to see that skill set. So it depends on the artist, but overall, I would say well-written and produced verses more. TF4D150, what do you plan for the channel? Are you gonna move into movie reviews and other video reactions or only music videos? Yes, great question. I do plan on moving into movie and video. I, I think I actually, I, I answered it earlier, but yeah, I do plan on moving into movie and TV show reviews. Yeah, I did one so far with The Social Dilemma on Netflix. If you wanna check that out, just type in Social Dilemma in my channel and it'll be there. Um, but that's the style of review that I wanna do. I probably won't be walking around like I was in that video because I don't know, I just and enjoy that so I'll probably be here stationary but yeah I do plan on doing that even iconic older movies breaking down you know cinematography of the older shots and why the decision was made to, to have this camera angle or why this lighting was chosen like I would break all that stuff down as well because I, I'm fascinated with cinematography next up Charles Webb do you think artists should stop making music once they pass their prime or do you think they should keep making music even though their quality drops because it's not as good as their older work people aren't necessarily past their prime in terms of lyrical capability they can still write the same but just their ability to adapt into a new style of production or to a new sound that normally comes once every like seven years like Eminem old Eminem which what you would call his prime it, it probably wouldn't be good today like if Eminem came in in the in the in right now in 2020 like that older style of, of rap 
that wouldn't that wouldn't fit and gel well into what people are expecting now. And newer Eminem is a better rapper. He's a better lyricist, a better writer than he ever was in the early days. People are still willing to intake his music at a very high level. So even though you might call him past his prime because he was a way bigger artist back in the day, he is still technically in a new level of prime now. And then let's just take someone like Lupe Fiasco, for example, he is past his prime because his prime was his first two albums because of all the issues that he had with his record label. His commercial success prime was definitely those first two albums. But conceptual album wise, conceptual album wise, Tetso and Youth and Drogas Waves, those are like, those are on par, if not stronger concepts than the cool was, but the cool was easier to take in because these are so complex. So he might be past his commercial prime, but he still has a core audience that is willing to listen to and go in and dissect those songs to make sure that they're getting the value out of it. So I guess in short, no one really is past their prime until the market says that they're past their prime. And then once they are past their prime, if they can be just as, success, just as successful in another avenue, why not? Like T-Pain is now streaming on Twitch. Logic is now streaming on Twitch. T-Pain you might consider as past his prime just because that sound is no longer relevant, but he as an entertainer and he as a talent is now gonna be relevant on Twitch. So. There's too many different avenues of making money for an artist to stay in one lane if that lane is no longer as commercially as commercially viable, you know? Next up, Andrew Caldas. Music historically has been good for my emotional processing, but there were long periods of time when this companion confirmed me only in sad, empty, depressing feelings, thereby pigeonholing me into the kind of emotional confirmation bias loop where I was stalled out for much too long. Yeah, that, that's something that happens to a lot of people. And to be honest, most people go through that thing. That's why the meme is like, whenever you're sad, you listen to sad music to get more sad. It's just, you unfortunately weren't, weren't able to find yourself out of that loop until, until recently. I'm glad you're out, but yeah. Since music is a communication of sorts, do you think certain genres of music might complement other specific genres? So together guide feeling, thinking, and behavior to more well-rounded, healthier ends, i.e. empowering better integration with reality. That's a really, great question and I'm honestly not too sure because I do know what you're talking about like a lot of music and a lot of specific artists are are a mood that as Rini one of the uh, one of the discord people one of the discord moderators said the other day about NF I haven't listened to NF in months because I haven't been in the mood to listen to NF because because there's a cognitive dissonance between what I'm feeling and how how what I'm feeling in the in reality versus what NF is bringing to the table. Like NF is a very heavy artist to listen to, and if I'm not in that mood, that 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 connection is going to be severed between my mood and the music that he's writing. But if you find yourself stalling out and not being able to get out of a loop that you know is bad for you, I would definitely suggest exploring other music and other artists that you might not have given potential to because a new artist with a different point of view than what you currently listen to could easily help you like get out of that like oh shit it might like I feel better when listening to this artist like that's what I say about in Andy Minio's music he's very heavily into his Christian faith but his music is not strictly about Christianity his music is about the human condition the struggle as a human being and the flaws that come with it and he just happens to know that he has God on his side to fix that but his music for the most part is very positive and that's going to be because of the connection and relationship that he has to Jesus and his and his and his religion but that doesn't mean that you have to be religious religious in any way to understand that there's that positive message that you can get out of anything. You know? So anybody that's watching this that might be in Andrew's position that he was previously and just stuck in that constant loop and you can't seem to get out of it, explore different avenues and different genres and different artists because there's always an artist that counteracts what you're feeling. It's a good question though. That I wasn't expecting anything like that. Next up, Kimberly Fliero, I wanna say, might not be right. I'm a Ride or Die 21 Pilots fan, but I'm curious if you have any thoughts about Tyler's recent post about using his platform that people took issue with in social media demanding that artists use their platforms to speak out on various political slash social issues. Sorry, this question is so long, LOL. It's not even the longest one of the day. This is a good question though. When it comes to people using their platform, I think that it comes off truly disingenuous if it's not something that I know that they believe in. I don't feel like there's a there's a, necess like a necessity for people to use their platform. If it doesn't, one, if it doesn't fit their brand, two, if it doesn't fit their image, three, if, if, it's, if it's potentially gonna be, if it's gonna be an issue for their brand and an issue for their career. Like politics doesn't matter enough 
enough, in my personal opinion, to even put that on my channel in a brand like that. I'm not like I'm not going to tell you to go. You need to go vote for Biden or you need to go vote for Trump right now. Like I'll tell you to go vote because I believe strongly in your right to vote for representation. But I don't care which way you vote as long as you as long as you vote. If they've always been a genuine person that's cared about politics, like for example, LeBron James, he uses his platform heavily, heavily for politics. And and for, and to me, that's OK, because he's always been about that. That's always been part of his brand. And for me, it's not a problem with him. But for other people, like when Casey Neistat did it four years ago, three years ago, and he was telling everybody to go vote and vote against Trump, it seemed like a very short sighted video because that, that's not what his platform is about. Like you will never, ever see me talk about politics on this channel. One, because it's not my brand. Two, because I don't care about pushing my political opinion on somebody else. Three, this channel is for entertainment and I don't wanna bring in everyday like everyday issues and topics that are talked about constantly. I want you to be taking the 20 minutes that you give to me to kind of decompress from all that real world shit. So it really just depends on the person, but you gotta know going into it as the artist that you're one, you could easily seem disingenuous. Two, it could polarize your fan base and you might never ever recover from it. I don't know, I just think from a business sense, it doesn't make enough sense for me to, to for somebody to go and do that. Especially in today's fucking like toxic cancel culture. I can't stand cancel culture. Another reason why you'll never see me talk about politics. Next up, Atreus, music has been a, next up, Atreus, music has been a safe harbor for me through times, through tough times. Same for me, bro. Is there a song slash album that helped get you through difficult times and why? Um, not really a specific album, I would say, because I, I mean, I've been privileged enough, I guess you can say, to not really have too many difficult times. Most difficult times that I can think of, or at least on an emotional basis, are gonna be like during breakups or during relationships. Like I mentioned previously, I would use sad music to go like dive deeper into the woe is me, but then I would use music to like uplift and get me out of that. Um, but other than that, I would probably say just from a from a standpoint of like knowing that I need to go out and get it, like nothing's gonna come to me. That's probably the only other time that I felt like music has has helped me. But there's not a specific artist or an individual song for that one. I can list a name of like sad songs that I listen to during breakups, but artist wise to help me like push through any kind of rut or any kind of hump that I might be facing. Like when the channel was going and I didn't want to make videos because I wasn't getting views or what have you. To be able to push through that, I did listen to certain artists like J. Cole. I listened to Incubus, I listened to Lincoln Park, like anything that got my vibe up. That's basically what it was. Jacob Gonzalez, who was the most influential person in your life? Family related, obviously gonna be my immediate family, dad, mom, stepmom, brother. Like I find inspiration from all of them for different reasons. On the outside, Kevin Hart is a big inspiration because of his hustle and because of like his his ability to branch out and do other things from the other than the platform that he became successful on, which was stand-up comedy. Um, J. Cole staying true to his roots and not having any features on his most recent album. Albums, no features and also keeping his music core to who he was regardless if that's what regardless if that's what the label wanted him to do like those things staying true to self and being able to capitalize on opportunity those are the things that make people influential in my life which is why I would say Kevin Hart is a big one J. Cole is a big one next up Nathaniel Sacranti I want to say is pronounced five favorite EDM artists number one easily Cascade. I don't know if I don't know after Cascade the order, but number two, Swedish House Mafia. Number three, again after Cascade. I'm not too sure on the order of this, but I'm just listening them off. Morgan Page would be number three. Let me see who else we got in here. Above and Beyond would easily be four. I want to say off the top of my mind, it would probably be Calvin Harris, but I would I, it would be a tough decision. Next up, Derek Touche. Through all your travels, what is your favorite trip and what made it great? Damn. That's a tough one. Probably, probably my my cousin's bachelor party when we went to Las Vegas, just because it was your it was your typical Vegas experience. I'm talking about like we landed, I lost two hundred dollars as soon as I got to the craps table. Like the moment we stepped foot onto the strip and went to go get beer, at, like on the strip on the street, my friend didn't have his ID with him, and he was like, "Holy fuck!" I don't know what happened to my ID. That panic moment of like we're in Las Vegas, we look like we're 18 years old, but we're really 22, 23, and not having your ID got to be the worst feeling and then number four my cousin whose bachelor party it was got so fucked up on the plane he was basically out of commission for the entire trip we're literally wheelchairing him everywhere with like a bottle of Gatorade so the person that we went for we didn't really even hang out that often and then my friend pfft, we lost him for a little bit and he cried in front of the Statue of Liberty at New York, New York at like 4.30 in the morning because he was solo and he was literally one hotel away from the whole... 
from where we were staying. He didn't realize where he was at and he cried because he couldn't find his way. So that Vegas trip was obviously one for the books. And then the other Vegas trip would probably be my first time going to EDC with my cousin and one of our good friends, uh, uh, Marissa. And then if I had to say anything else other than Las Vegas, it would probably be the most recent trip with my mom and my aunt and their husbands to New York because I had never been to Yankee Stadium. My mom's a diehard Yankee fan and I went to my first Yankee game with her in New York. I went to go visit the mall I saw the Starry Night. I saw I saw the Lilies. I saw all the Campbell soups. I saw I saw Basquiat. I saw all these different things that like I had only dreamed of seeing, and I didn't realize that they were right there in New York. I have a video edit of our 2017 New York trip if y'all want to watch it. Go go check it out. It's in the vlogs. Next up, Josh Ward. If you had to listen to a single artist or group for the rest of your life, who would you choose and why? <laughs> It would obviously be an artist with a huge ass catalog. Incubus is one that I can think of right off the top of my head that I would listen to. Eminem is obviously a big one just because of the, the sheer catalog that he has. I couldn't, I honestly couldn't narrow it down just thinking about it. I would have to think on it for a while. Next up, Giovanni Martinez. Eminem's newest album brought me to your channel and I was so wondering what is your absolute favorite Eminem song and why? Holy shit, favorite M song. My favorite Eminem song would probably be I'm Back off of Marshall Mathers LP. First off, Marshall Mathers LP is my favorite Eminem album ever. And that song in general, just like a pit, like it was the epitome of who Eminem was and the I don't give a fuck character and nature that he was that he had to be censored on that song on the uncensored version of the album. Like the Columbine massacre, like the school, the very first like nation, nationwide school shooting that like got caught worldwide national attention. A year and a half maybe after that happened, not even then, he talked about it on the album. And that was like my, that was my favorite moment on the album. Even though I know it was very dark, it was also like he could say whatever the fuck he wants because that's his right as an American citizen. And he still got censored. He even talks about it in Rap God when he says like, that one line when I said, I take seven kids from Columbine, stand them all in the line with AK-47 and AUG-9. And he says like, we'll see if they censor that now since I'm not as big as I once was. Like, that's crazy. That That's probably my favorite song ever of Eminem. Good question though, next is Seppi. Who is your hero? Thanks. But actual hero outside of family? I'm not too sure. I've never even, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever idolized any celebrity or artist in that level to be able to call them a hero. So I, I honestly don't know. Next, we got Verger. Would you be interested in doing reactions to band like 30 Seconds to Mars or even Ramstein? Kind of doing a bit more artists and genres to help the channel grow and develop like you did with the K-pop videos. Actually, yes, I do plan on listening to rock, especially like 30 Seconds to Mars. I, I If I'm not mistaken, I think I have a request for it. Where's my request? But let's take a gander one time. I lied, it's uh, Bring Me The Horizon. That's who I have right now. Oh yeah, I do have 30 Seconds to Mars on here from Ali, 30 Seconds to Mars from yesterday. So yes, that's coming soon. It's on my it's on my list. I thought I saw it, but yes, I do plan on reacting to rock, especially if people request it. Obviously I'm gonna get to request, but yeah, I do plan on getting into rock a little bit more, especially rock that was like very popular rock back in the 2000s, like early, like 2006, 2009 timeframe because that's when I was like into rock heavily. And also, I guess you can, at least in my personal opinion, just because that's when I got into it, that was like the prime for rock for me. Or even not rock, just like emo or screamo or whatever you want to call it. Next up, Trevor Green. If you had three hip hop songs to describe in your personal personality slash life, what would they be and why? Holy shit. First off, one of them would definitely probably be uh, either Jake, both of them, J. Cole, it would be uh, Hello and Love Yours, one of those two, if not both of them, off of 2014 Forest Hills Drive, because I've been through the hello situation and that what they're talking about in that song. And then also Love Yours is just like such a, you know, eye-opening song. Like there's there's no such thing as a life that's better than yours. Everybody's got their burdens, everybody's got their issues. Uh, Probably Dig by Incubus would be another one. Actually, those three songs right off the top of my brain are the only ones that I can think of. But if I, if I think of better answers, I'll answer them in a future Q&A. And then lastly, we're at our last one. Didn't even realize, Nick Fadden. Would you see, would you say that Miro by Lupe Fiasco is best, is best bar for bar rap song of all time, or at least up there? Yes, very easily it is just because of the complexities and just because of what he's talking about in the song. The fact that he basically, he didn't freestyle the whole thing one take straight, but he did he did freestyle the concepts and what he was talking about. He just let the beat ride, if I'm not mistaken. And he would just like come up with a couple of vert, like a couple of bars here and there until he had the entire eight minute long song. But yeah, there's wordplay in there. There's conceptualization in there. There's definitely a grasp of the English language. There's twisting of words. There's visualization, there's storytelling. Like everything in that song could easily be one of the best bar for bar rap songs of all time. But yo, 49 questions. 
that brings us to the end of this q a i appreciate everybody's time if you made it this far if you didn't make it this far i don't know why i'm even uh, acknowledging you because you're not watching this but yo if you have any i appreciate everybody that that asked questions because obviously you're on patreon in order to get these questions in and obviously y'all are the ones that are making the channel go so i really really appreciate y'all guys being there on patreon if you want to potentially ask questions in the future you can either up your patreon subscription if you're already on patreon or you can subscribe and help the channel because that greatly helps me and have financial security in order to make this thing go further and make it blossom into what it, what we know it can become thank you for watching if you like the video consider liking and leaving a comment Comment, helps the algorithm like I always say consider subscribing um, but that's really all that I got for you today ladies and gentlemen I appreciate everybody's time and like I always say at the very end go out there in the world love and care for one another love and care for each other and I'll catch everybody on the next video peace